Inside Science. The planet Venus, 900 degrees Fahrenheit at the surface, raindrops of 90% sulfuric acid, and now signs that hint at possible life. A team of astronomers have monitored how light is absorbed or reflected by the planet's atmosphere, and they found that a certain wavelength is being absorbed far more than expected, a wavelength associated with the chemical phosphine. Now, phosphine can be produced by physical processes, by chemical reactions under the ground, lightning bolts in the atmosphere, or, or even carried in on the back of meteorites and comets. But none of these sources can account for the amount of phosphine that the astronomers see. And one other possibility that they can't rule out is that it's created by life. And bacteria on Earth can produce phosphine when they're starved of oxygen. Could something similar be happening on Venus? Well, to be honest, it's still pretty unlikely. Although temperatures higher up in the atmosphere might suit life, it's a balmy 85 degrees up there, the drops of concentrated acid in the air would be more than any Earth species could stand. So if it is life, it's not as we know it, Jim. Or perhaps it's a kind of physical phosphine generation that we've never seen before. Either way, it's going to have scientists scanning the skies for answers for a while yet. As will these. Planetary nebulae. Interstellar clouds of dust and gas thrown out by dying stars. But how do they end up in such incredible formations? Now, researchers from Belgium think they know why. And they say that we've been missing something. As a star goes from a red giant to a white dwarf, it throws out the elements of its outer layers as stellar wind. If it were alone in space, you might expect the stellar wind to expand out in a spherical cloud, like an ink droplet on paper. But when the researchers examined 14 stars undergoing this transformation, they kept seeing spirals and disks in the dust. And to explain this, they suggested that each star has an unseen companion, another star or a giant planet that circles its dying neighbour, stirring up the space dust like stirring cream into coffee. And eventually, that stirring would make these incredible structures. But now, back down to Earth with a thud. Helping white people to understand systemic racial inequality is necessary to confront white privilege and help build a fairer society. And when asked about income levels between black and white Americans, white Americans tend to think income levels are closer than they actually are. Scientists from Yale University tried to change that. They gave a group of white Americans an article about how racial inequalities in wealth have persisted since the 1960s. Then they were asked to rate inequality today and back in the 60s. But the results were unexpected. To start with, the reading made no difference to understanding today's situation. White participants still thought income levels were closer than they really are. But when they had to judge the 60s, those who'd read the article actually thought incomes had been even more equal back then than those who hadn't read the article at all. The Yale scientists suggest that unconsciously, the article readers may not want to accept that today's America has profound racial differences in income. So when they were told that things hadn't changed since the 60s, they imagined that the 60s must have been better. Understanding this kind of counterintuitive psychology will be crucial to tackling systemic racism. If only we could just look inside people's heads, like we can actually do with mice. You're looking at the surface of a mouse's brain. And this video comes from a lab in Stanford where they've applied a chemical cocktail to the mouse's skull to turn the bone transparent. The flashing you can see are neurons genetically engineered to fluoresce when they're active. But that activity is not normal. In fact, this mouse has just been given a large dose of ketamine. Ketamine is an anaesthetic that has dissociative properties. That means that taking it can make you feel aware of the world but unable to engage with it, or even care about it. That rhythmical flashing is what your neurons do when you enter a dissociative state. Now, the researchers tested a number of interesting chemicals and only saw that activity with dissociative drugs. Now, to check that this is happening in humans the same way as in mice, the researchers found an epilepsy patient with monitoring implants in the relevant parts of the brain. That patient volunteered to have their brain stimulated at the same frequency. Sure enough, the patient began to dissociate. 
incredible. A literal window into the way that the brain works. And that's it from me this month. Goodbye. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.